Hi, in this video we'll learn about Google Calendar API. So I'm at the home page of Google Calendar API. So links are in description. You can go through there also. So now if you go to guides, here it will tell uh, how to use it and all the stuffs. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, just take help of this quick start to get started really quick. Okay, so here you can choose the language in which you want to uh, develop your app or use this api so we are using php so i'll go with php okay so first step is to enable api and get the all credentials uh, to use the api okay so without credential google will not know who is uh, uh, requesting for uh, the service okay so this is a really important step so first we'll click here and it will take uh, us to wizard uh, which following this wizard will uh, set up our API okay so here so if you are using this first time you want to go with create project and continue so it will create the project called my projects okay so our project is created and our this Google Calendar API is also enabled okay so uh, now if you go to credentials so if you are confused with steps uh, all is written here you can take help from this documentation okay so so after doing that what we want to do is uh, we'll hit the cancel okay so we're, we're, we are using O or to client Okay, so for Google Calendar, we'll use that. So OAuth client ID will get that. So and here, before doing that, it it is telling you that you have to configure the uh, consent screen where you'll define your project name and all the stuffs. Okay, so this is the email address uh, we'll be using uh, for this API, and you can give the uh, product name here. Okay, so that it will appear in uh, allow access screen. So we'll see that in a moment. So you don't need to do any other steps. It's totally fine. And I'll hit save. Okay, so now next, you can choose what type of application is that. Okay, so um, you can go with web application here. So what this guide is telling is it's just to others. Okay, so we'll go with that and you can give the name okay so uh, now your credentials are ready so uh, you can use these we'll download the JSON so that's what we'll be needing so after you hit OK you'll see this screen I will download this JSON okay so so I'll, I'll just copy uh, this to desktop and I'll rename it client secret so you can give whatever name but uh, the main thing is you have to remember that so that you can include that in your project so next step is to install the google client library so in order to do that just go to the project okay so in this case i'm using uh, the notebook app so i'll right click there and git pass there okay so you can switch to that okay so now i will type composer require require google slash api client so so now it will uh, install the latest version of google api client okay in your project now after that uh, in your project you need to uh, copy and paste the client secret dot json that you have uh, just saved in your uh, desktop so copy from uh, there and just paste it to public folder that will contain all the IDs and all the stuff okay so so next after you have copied that you need to create a controller so we are creating the API so we'll create the uh, resourceful controller so uh, type in PHP artisan make controller I'll call it G calendar controller resource so now that our controller is created we'll just start writing code 
okay so instead of typing code i'll paste it and explain what is going on okay so that will reduce the uh, video time okay you can find the code in github okay so links are in description as always all right so let me paste the code here in the index okay so here what we are doing is first we are starting the session so that we can store the token inside the session okay so okay so the first is we are initializing the google client okay so new client so make sure uh, you use the google client up here okay okay use google client after that next what we are doing here is uh, we are uh, specifying the uh, config file which we have copied inside our public okay so inside our public folder we got this client secret.json so we are specifying that here okay so if you have stored that in other location just specify that okay so next is we are specifying the scope so what scope is what we can do to the calendar so here if you see it is read only so we cannot modify in this scope okay so we cannot modify the calendar so in order to modify that we have to just use calendar not read only okay so read only is just reading the data and calendar means uh, reading as well as writing okay so next uh, these two line of code are required in local development environment because google uh, google or i don't know what uh, it gives me error of ssl verifying okay so i just made that ssl verifier false so in local environment that uh, might not verify ssl certificate okay so if you are in live server so you might not get these error you might not uh, need these two line up lines of code okay okay so next what we are doing here is we are checking if uh, session got uh, got this access token and that is not empty and after that what we are doing is we are setting the access token of client to the token which we have acquired okay okay so uh, now we are initializing the service okay google service calendar and we are passing in the fully qualified uh, client okay so uh, fully qualified means in discord access token and all other configuration contained in this file all right so next uh, we, we are uh, setting we are just defining the id which calendar we want to use for this service so uh, primary means wh whatever your primary calendar in your google calendar you specify there okay so in that calendar we want to modify and read all the events okay so next uh, this is the optional parameter y you don't need that uh, this is just uh, specifying this is max result is 10 and start time so what that is uh, doing is printing the next 10 events on users calendar okay next uh, in uh, this service we are calling the events okay so events and we want to list the events in the calendar with id primary and with these parameter okay so if you don't want to pass any parameter just remove this okay so you can find the reference uh, of these commands in google docs okay okay so this events will uh, list the events okay so after that i'm returning the result uh, the items in the result okay so result contains all other responses and we are getting the items okay so after that if uh, if this user is uh, user do not go, uh, got the access token okay here we are checking for that what we want to do is we want to redirect the user to oauth uh, url okay so what this um, uh, this method is defined here oauth okay so here if user do not contain access token we want to uh, um, issue the access token or give that access token okay store the access token in session session okay so so inside this what we are doing is again we are starting the session and we, we are setting the redirect url to the same url okay so 
next we are doing same thing initializing the uh, client and setting the auth config file and setting the redirect URL to this okay and um, also here is scope so next these two line of code for uh, this local environment okay so that you can uh, disable the SSL verifier okay otherwise it will give give error okay so here what is happening is uh, so if you look at this diagram what the process is this is uh, your app and you request the token okay so by uh, visiting the page okay so when you request for the token a google server will ask you for credentials okay so login with your gmail account and other stuff after you allow that to use your personal account what that will do is that will send you authorization code and with that code you generate the access token okay so um, so with that access token you call the api whatever api okay so at this moment we are using calendar api so uh, that is the process so in here if not it, it is set get code means if code is not set okay so if there is no code what we want to do is we want to uh, create the auth url so this is the uh, method which is inside the google calendar service okay so what that will uh, do is that will generate the auth url which we will see in the moment and uh, th that will redirect us to that url okay where we can generate the code by allowing the access okay so uh, if that is not set okay so if no, we do not uh, so if uh, sorry if we already have the code so else statement this code uh, will uh, execute it so if we already got the code what we want to do is we want to authenticate the client okay so client will be the user and we want to store that access token inside session okay so we store it here and we use it up here in index okay so we store that and redirect back to index okay so this is the uh, url okay so if you go into web.php you can define here resource okay uh, so cal for calendar and all these okay so we just generally need these two routes okay okay now let's test this okay so if you go to browser and hit that route okay so localhost slash gcal okay so by the way you need to make the server name localhost in order to use that okay so what i've done here is just i split out the name localhost and document root to that public folder here okay so after that uh, just type in localhost slash cal uh, for index to hit the index method so if you hit that uh, you are not authenticated so it will redirect you back to this oauth so here you don't have already have code so this code will get executed and you are redirected to this auth url okay so so this is the url so here if you allow okay allow that and it will uh, generate the code and get you access token and access to token will get stored in your session and you use that to call the google calendar service okay so that is the general workflow so these are the events okay so this is how you use index uh, to index the calendar so next we'll uh, learn about how we can create new events and all the stuffs